say 404? Yeah. We practice this and I know where it's at. So. All right, 404. Are you there? Here we go. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. just showing them love and they found out that there's quite a few that are Christian at work but yet they still drink they still get high but they're Christian by what how they say it and there was a few there and then of course the liquor came out and the shot glasses came out now I didn't touch it and they never even asked me to take you know drink with them and I didn't and after it was all said and done I got a text message from her she said she was so thankful she she was sort of sorry that she even brought it out but it proved to her there are Christians that are Christians and I stand for what I believe in Amen. and and I'm not sorry for it right. and I thank God that he has transformed because I used to be that Christian. I used to be like that. And God has taken me and transformed me every single day. It gets better and better and better. Amen. And I thank God for it. And another thing, today when the kids were going to do the play, I took my grandkids to McDonald's. And we all hold hands and we go to pray. 
and it's just natural for us to do. And mm -hmm. we all were at our table and went to pray, and everything at McDonald's stopped. Awesome. It got awesome. totally silent, awesome. and it actually, you could hear a pin drop. That's so cool. And I prayed, and at, well, I said, and we all say, and the kids will all in unison say, amen, really loud. <laughs> and it, it just seemed like an echo because it was so quiet in there. And then I had people come up, they said, you know what? You're raising them kids right. It made me feel good that yeah. someone had not, you know, seen that. And that's yeah. what I want to portray to this yeah. world. Yes. Because people keep just taking God, God out of it. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. And you know how to put it in. Yeah. Amen for you, It sister. was a blessing. Big sure blessing. You. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Anybody else? Anybody else? Once I got the Lord Savior, it's a joy. And uh, uh, I know He will not leave me wrong. I know He cares for me. I know He loves me. I know He wants the best for me. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's a joy to live for Him here, but the best is out of this world. And, and uh, He's coming soon. That's right. And uh, we're going to get to be with him. That's his promise. He made it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Anybody else? Joel? Just the uh, people I live with. I mean, it's, you know, kind of a crazy house, you know. <coughs> a room for rent. <coughs> and uh, just the people that are in there are very cultural. And everybody's nice and able for me to come here and get food and put it in the house. You know, some people are struggling just like me, who can't find work, so, you know, are able to help more than just me when I'm taking food home, so, yeah, it's a blessing for me to be able to be here, so, awesome, thank you guys so much, anybody else? I'm thankful I'm a Christian and we're all a testimony for each other, yeah, well, we're a walking Bible, Come absolutely, <laughs> shoot, nobody can take away your testimony, that's right, because that's your Bible, that's your story. Yeah. Nobody can say, oh, that didn't happen. Think about it. We had 25 kids in kids' church today, which, that's cool. Wow. It was awesome. Wow. It was cool. Hands were that's full, cool. huh? Hands were definitely full. I looked, at, I looked at Doug. I was like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> what did I tell you? What's that? What did I tell you? You said, it was, you said it was going to be fun, and it, 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 it did go well. Told you. So, oh, well, you're a pro at it. That's when fine. you see when you see 25, I mean, Kelly, you know, when you see 25 kids fill up a room, your heart kind of stops for a minute. Like, oh, <laughs> Lord, help me today. But I had Doug uh, and Mrs. Judy and Andrew with me today, so they were they did pretty well. Anybody else have a testimony? Roger? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, say that uh, I had a uh, pleasant um, afternoon with uh, my aunt, whose birthday was this. Uh, past week. Um, the fact that she's uh, a divorcee like myself and, and mm -hmm. she never had children with, with her, her ex-husband um, is really nice that we were able to have some time together because it's been a while since we've uh, talked and uh, I, uh, I was just thankful that the Lord had allowed me to have uh, my time with her, you know, because uh, you know, she's uh, I, I, I get a feeling that she may be going through some little bit more than what she's willing to admit right now, but uh, I guess you can kind of say uh, on that level, I can kind of relate to her uh, on some certain things that she's gone through, but then yet there could be some differences with our situations as well. But, but yeah, I was, I was really glad that I was just very thankful yeah. that I was able to see her. That's awesome. Yeah, cool. Thanks. I was thankful for everybody who came out to the singles thing uh, yesterday at Yates Cider Mill. I mean, it was a little chilly out there, and I was coughing my head off because I haven't been feeling that great. I like the video, but they uh, they thought I was gonna die right in the out there in the trail. I'm like, I, I can't die today. <laughs> See, you were so, chilly, but I had chilly. You had no. chilly. Hey, so I had chilly. <laughs> so a couple of you guys had chilly. So that was a good time. Anybody else? One more testimony. No. All right. Pastor Bud. Oh, thank you, Pastor Austin. I appreciate that. All right. Well, this evening, um, we're going to start a four-part series. Um, we're getting ready to get back into uh, um, the, the fall.
fall and winter time and um, we got a lot of things that are going to be planned in our evening services especially during the, in the month of december uh, december 15th is when our kids program our christmas kids program is going to be uh, during a p.m uh, hour and we'll have refreshments afterwards and so i'll be looking for more of that but uh, uh, we appreciate uh, everything pastor Austin does over in the kids church and all the help that uh, is over there as well well, this evening we're going to just simply, our simply, our title of our lesson is Land of the Lost. One of my favorite TV shows when I was a kid was the TV show called Land of the Lost. Uh, they remade it, and then they made a movie, and they, they always ruin stuff when they, when they try to redo stuff. But in this case, um, we're going to speak about things that are lost, all right? And this is not a Jeopardy question. Things that are lost, what is? Uh, uh, but anyway... We're going to take our Bibles, if you will, turn to the book of Luke, chapter 15. And when you get there, say amen. Anybody want my outline for this morning? Uh, there's a really cool outline for um, our lesson this morning on Numbers, chapter 21. There's a good sermon in there, brother, if you want to use it. So, FYI. Okay. <laughs> I'll take a copy. Yes, yes. You're more than welcome to it. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. All right. I guess I need to turn there as well, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke. All right. Luke chapter 15 is where we'll be at. Now, Luke chapter 15 has been called the lost and found. Um, I remember working at the, the schools throughout the years, and we had a, when I was working at the elementary schools, we had a big container. It was either a gymnasium or near the office or near the cafeteria, and it had all kinds of things. Uh, in that bin and it was a little dangerous uh, to look in that bin because you never know what people would have put in there that child uh, child has lost uh, and so um, but it wound up at the end of the year um, if we could match anything up we always was able to donate that uh, uh, to a shelter or something of that nature but um, how many have ever lost something um, and you spent some time looking for it. How many's got a cool story, a lost and found story? Anybody? Anybody? I know I kind of threw that on you at a, at a moment's notice. Who's got a cool lost and found story? Miss Kelly? I lost my child. What's that? I lost Julie at Disney World. I don't think that counts. You lost Julie at Disney World? Yeah, when she was four. Well, that's, it's all right. All right. Um, <laughs> we found her. You, well, yeah, they found her. <laughs> but they, she was married and had a child. So, I'm just kidding. All right? All right? Who else has a lost and found story? That's a good lost and found story, especially when it's a child. Amen? Yes, Ms. Linda. I didn't say one, and I was with you when we lost my child. So how about that? When I lost your child? No, when I lost my child, I was with you and Judy at Six Flags or something. Okay. Anyway. All right. Remind me, because I'm just. <laughs> wow. All right. But but you found. Yeah. Was it Stephanie? Yeah, Stephanie. All right. All right. That actually happened to me. Oh, I remember that. We went to the guard shack, and she was standing there, and they were saying, "Is this her?" And you said, "No, it's not her. She had long hair." Uh, no, I'm just kidding. All right. Anybody else have a lost and found story? I'm giving you a little second here to think about it. All right. Um, I was reading this past week that they're in the state of Florida, or as I call it sometimes, Florida. Uh, Florida, they had uh, somebody who had uh, lost a dog in 2007. Um, and this week, it turned up in Philadelphia. Wow. This week, it turned up in Philadelphia. It was microchipped or something, and um, this dog had been missing for 12 years. And uh, they were glad to get it back. Imagine that. And the dog was like, you know what? I've been calling and nobody's been picking up. All right. Um, anybody else have a lost and found story? All right. Well, Luke chapter 15 has been called the lost and found. And in the 32 verses that we're going to cover in the next, we got a four-part series. And it may even go further or shorter, depending how fast I talk. Uh, we got a, lo a lot of stuff. We got a long way to go when I short time to get there all right but Jesus uses less no less than uh, four illustrations dealing with the lost 
and with God's desire to see them saved and restored to fellowship with himself. And so there, there are those who are lost, and then we also have those wandering sheep, all right? Um, and as a church, all of us have been in church long enough to know that there have been wandering sheep, sheep that have wandered away uh, from... Uh, me and Brother Don were talking about this today. We have some names on our mailing list that uh, folks that uh, have wandered away. They're not attending anywhere else, but and they have wandered away. And I keep them on the mailing list because when I when you all get a postcard in the mail, uh, I send them a postcard. When you all get a text message in your phone, when I do a text blast, I keep their phone number in my in my uh, text messages. So they know that I know that they know that I know that they anyway that they're uh, they're out there and we want them to be back here and so um, we have those four illustrations that are dealing with the lost and with God's desire to see them saved and restored to fellowship with himself and one of the greatest assets that we have as believers when we wander away from God I believe we have this really cool thing uh, about forgiveness and restoration a lot of people they're like, well, I can forgive you, but I don't think you know. I, I want to tell you, there's in the in the in the body of Christ there is forgiveness and restoration. And so let me just give you a brief overview, and then we'll get onto our printed portion uh, of our scripture uh, this evening. Uh, we and here's how kind of how it breaks down. So if you keep in track, uh, verses three through seven, they they record the illustration of the lost sheep, and then verses eight through ten record the illustration of the lost coin. And then verses 11 through 24 give the illustration of the lost son or the lost daughter at Disney World or the lost daughter at Six Flags. And then, see, it's not, it's not beyond reality, all right? So uh, verses 30, 25 through 32, they relate the illustration of the lost sibling. Um, and uh, so that's kind of uh, how it's broken down. Now, <clears throat> the backdrop of this passage of Scripture we're going to dive into here just a little bit there are heavenly stories with earthly meanings, and it's found in verses one through uh, and found in verses one through two. Now, in these verses, Jesus is seen reaching out into the lost and dying, and we're told that he was sitting with the publicans and the sinners. Let's read that together, and, and uh, then we'll we'll get a, dive in a little bit further. Let's. Uh, who'd like to read that? Other than me, who'd like to read that? Anybody who's sort of really good, articulate, and very loud. Who'd like to read that? Douglas, are you ready? Four. Yeah, we're going to read uh, all the way through 32. One through 32. Remember, I'm not articulate, so... You are, you're as articulate as I am. Oh, well, all right. you're more so. I'll listen. Go ahead. You said 15 what? Yep. One verse. Two? What am I, which one am I starting at? Yeah, verse 1, all the way through 32. All right, so the parable of the lost sheep. <laughs> then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, The man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after the, that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, have, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no repentance. Continue? Yes. Yeah, it's a thirty-two. Oh boy, I'm reading all of them. Mm -hmm. yep. Jesus tells the parable of lost coin. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently until she find it? And when she had found it, she called her friends and neighbors, gathering, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. And likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. And then Jesus tells of the parable of the lost son. And he said, A certain man has two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided them uh, his living, divided them in his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, then arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. 
And when he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, he went, he sent them into the fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the, uh, with the husk of swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came unto himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no, wor no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And likewise he came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran, and fell on his neck, and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy spirit, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and the shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this is my son, for this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew nigh to the house, and he heard the music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came out, came out his father and entreated him. And he answered, saying, and said to his father, Lo, these many years did I serve thee, neither transgressed, <clears throat> transgressed I at any time thy commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, uh, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is designed. It was meet that it was meet that we should make merry and be glad for this day the brother was dead and is alive again and was lost. Is found. Amen. All right. Well, who are the publicans and the sinners? Somebody help me out. Anybody want to help me out? The publicans are the tax collectors, and they also they call them sinners. Okay. There was a there was that group of people. The publicans were the people in like him. Because they made you pay the any who's I gotta be careful I, how to say this. How many of you are fan real big fans of the IRS? Anybody? <laughs> I, I'm a fan of the IRS. Um, but no, they had the publicans and the sinners. The publicans at this time, they were the tax collectors, and they were the they would uh, take a little money off the top and put it in their own pocket when they would come around collecting taxes. And then they also had the sinners, those that were are without. And we have all those people. What did he say? The Pharisees and the scribes. Who are the Pharisees and the scribes? So we got a group of people over here that Jesus is with. The, the religious leaders that he wasn't with. And so over here, yes, amen. The scribes and the Pharisees, the religious leaders, they were offended that, that, and that it's kind of the world in which we live in today. Everybody's offended over everything. And here we have the scribes and the Pharisees were offended that Jesus, the, the well, he's been called the Son of God and the Messiah and all those things. And here he is having uh, sat down with the publicans and the sinners. And so we find all these words were written in red. This is Jesus speaking. So if you want to know who, who was speaking, it was Jesus himself was giving these illustrations. So as we begin, we're going to speak about the lost sheep, the lost sheep. And then simply one day, a shepherd counts his sheep. How many of you have ever been counting something and you had to stop and start all over? Anybody? All right. How many of you have seen somebody counting and you went and you started saying numbers too and then they still had to start all over? Well, one day a shepherd counts a sheep. One sheep, two sheep, three sheep. Um, and he expects to find a hundred. Now, once these, these are parables or these are stories, heavenly stories that Jesus is telling here. And so we have a metaphorical shepherd who's counting sheep. And he, he has a hundred sheep. And he begins to count and he expects to find a hundred sheep. My mom always, uh, when she balanced her checkbook. How many of you still balance a checkbook? Anybody? We got one, two. What's that? All right. <laughs> Um, my mom always balanced a checkbook, and if she was off just a penny, 
she would go back and go back and go back until she found that penny. Um, and she re and honestly, she would rejoice when she found that penny. No lie. Um, and uh, so the, those of you who still balance your checkbooks, you know what I'm talking about. And so here we find that he expects at the end of his census to find 100 sheep. But he is dismayed. He's uh, kind of upset uh, that one of the flock is missing. What was his motivation to leave his 99 sheep who were with him? What was his motivation? So let me help me out. To find the one that was lost. Okay. Why would it be so important? I mean, Julie was lost at uh, SeaWorld. Julie was lost at Disney World. What's the motivation that would motivate a mom to go out looking for her daughter? Uh, it's their child. What's that? It's their child. It's their child? Well, okay. Danger. We Danger. Were, we were at um, Typhoon Lagoon where there was a wave pool. She yeah. was four years old and couldn't swim. And so when she was lost in the crowd, you know, it was like 35, 40 minutes before we found her. And they did a pool check and stopped the waves and had everybody get out to see if she was in there. She wasn't. But I mean, it's panic because it's safety and, you know, life or death. And I, that's the shepherd. <coughs> when that sheep is outside of the sheepfold, it's life or death for that sheep. So as long as those other 99 were in the sheepfold, they were safe. The one that was out was in danger and could lose its life. Amen. There's strength in numbers. But when you're out uh, sequestered by yourself, when they found Julie, she was sitting at the edge of the pool with one of those tall, slurpy things and a cabana boy fanning her. All right. No, they didn't do that. Um, but here we had uh, the shepherd was concerned because he was motivated that there was danger afoot. And uh, and it was the sheep that was under his charge. Um, the shepherd sat back and he waited two or three days to go out. No, that's not accurate. What did the shepherd do? He went out immediately. He's like, I got 99 sheep and I got one that's missing. And he, he didn't tarry. He didn't think about it. He didn't call home. He didn't text about it. He didn't put it on Facebook. He went out immediately and he began to take action to restore that sheep to its proper place in the fold. And it's no different than you or I when we have a, 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 she, a sheep and here we are the under shepherd. And we have our uh, Pastor Knight and Pastor Austin here. And then we have Pastor Jared next door. He's teaching his class. So when one of our sheep that God has given us charge over is missing... One of the things that we actually do on Sunday evening or even on Monday from time to time, I'll, I'll sit with a, a Brother Sister Knight and Brother Fred and Linda. There's this new restaurant over on Watson. It's called Wendy's. Anybody heard of it? Um, <laughs> but we'll go up there and sit, and then Pastor Knight will say something. Well, I missed so-and-so yesterday, and I missed so-and-so. Me and Miss Judy on the way home from church many times, she'll say, well, I didn't see Sister so-and-so. And so that's a cue for us to, number one, try to track them down to find out what was going on. Because many times, hey, I was on my way and I had a flat tire or I got up this morning and I had the croup or whatever the case may be. But it's an instinctive thing for all of us to look. You all know uh, Jenna and Jeanette sit right there. And then we have uh, uh, the Garcia set here. And then we have the Jaleski set here. And then we have Fred and Linda set here. We have Stan and... and uh, Doreen set here, and so we know where everybody sets, and so when they're missing, it's a cue for us to say, hey, what's up? And we're missing. Yes, amen. Um, and the greens were sitting here, and uh, Darren and I could hear his laughter before I even seen him, so I knew he was sitting closer than he usually sits. <laughs> but here we have the shepherd was concerned about that one that was missing. And it's vitally important. Why is it vitally important that we, and I, and I have failed in this in many ways, why is it vitally important that we're after the sheep that are missing? 
Because they can go astray and get lost and the devil can put you in them. Yeah, it's that danger, it's that danger, danger, danger. I feel like, you know, the robot from Lost in Space, danger, danger. <laughs> Truly, yes. it's a dangerous world out there. Uh, and the tough thing is the enemy, he wants to do everything he can to distract us and dissuade us from our calling to be God's kids. Now, in this account uh, of, of searching and saving and shouting, we get a clear picture of the shepherd's love. Um, I spoke this morning just briefly about my Uncle Delbert and how he shot one of his dogs because it treated a possum. And it seems kind of cruel, I understand that. And, but these aren't the dogs, you know. And, 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 and there wasn't much love in that situation. They, they were work animals, and that's all he's seen them as. However, we have a beautiful picture of a shepherd who had the love for his sheep. And there's something to be said about investing time. Um, anybody worked on a farm here? Uh, I know Reverend Knight has, and Sister Knight has been on a farm. Uh, anybody else worked a farm? Miss Margaret, all right. Um, anybody ever done a 4 H fair stuff? Uh, any raised an animal? Anybody been to the 4 H fair? I love the 4 H fair. What happens when you go to the 4 H fair and you see those ribbons on the posts of the stalls? There's usually like a 12 year old kid who's standing right next to whatever animal it is with that ribbon that is posted on the stall, and they are very, very proud of that animal. It could be a pig. I walk in, I see the blue ribbon, I say, that's going to make some nice bacon one day. And the child would get offended. <laughs> you know why? Because they've invested their time. They love, they literally love that animal. They have invested their life. They've gotten up early in the morning and they went out and they did what their mom and dad say. said, now you need to take care of it. And so... Um, it reminds me of a, a, a story here a while ago, and I, I, I'll share it just briefly with you. Um, Pastor Jared moved to uh, uh, Southgate when he was working for uh, Planet Fitness. And he got in an apartment. We went down there, and he signed up for an apartment. And uh, he was spending a lot of time. He was actually sleeping at Planet Fitness and, um, because he had, didn't have an apartment. So we thought it would be important for him to get an apartment. Well, uh, when you're in an apartment and you're... You know, an hour, I forget how much time it was between here and Southgate. And you spend that, that much time by yourself in an apartment. Well, um, he got a dog. And he would go to work and the dog would be at home all by himself. And, and then Miss Judy says, well, you know, it's not fair to the dog to be at home all by itself. And so the dog came to my house. <laughs> And the dog is still at my house. <laughs> and uh, I said all that to say this. We care for the slightest of animals out there. We, we raised guinea pigs when I was a kid. We raised dachshunds when I was a kid. And those animals meant the world to us as kids. And here we find that shepherd and... And he had those sheep and he was anxious and he was he loved those sheep and he had a, a longing and a labor for those sheep. Just as much as the Lord has a longing and a love for you and I. And here we find that he had his sheep count was off by one. Now I want to help you out that there's a picture of salvation in these verses that, that we're dealing with that. Uh, we don't want to miss today. Um, if there is a person who comes to church lost today, they're going to hear how Jesus uh, died for them and what Jesus has done for them and that they can be saved today. This morning, as we give the invitation, it was a twofold invitation. It's an invitation to the believer who may have been snake bit in this world once again. And there is also an invitation for those who were out in the world who've never been saved and they have been bit by the world. And we have that picture of that longing and that labor that Jesus wants us all to be a part of the body of Christ. There's that picture of salvation. And so, if we're saved, 
we'll be reminded of his love and his grace that he's been given us the opportunity to thank him today. And so if you're saved, but aren't as close to the shepherd as we ought to be, we also have been given the opportunity to set things right on a daily basis. When we, how, many, how many of you all fail the Lord? I do. All of us do. What happens when we fail the Lord? Does he, does he just lock us off and say, I'm done with them? No. Why don't he do that? People in this world will do that. They'll lock you off and they'll say, I'm done with you. Because he's not human. What's that? He's not human. Yeah, he, he's got that... He's got that undying, never-ending love for his kids. And even when we fail him in our imperfection, and I could say even our willful sin, God is there to faithfully forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we have that repentant heart. Someone with a comment, question. All right, that's my introduction. So let's examine the lost sheep. Here we have in verse... Uh, Verse number four, we have the shepherd's compassion for that lost sheep. That word lost is that same word that is translated perish. All right? So you see the severity of that picture of that lost sheep. They perish. When we were going up to um, MLA City yesterday, um, it's right now is the season when the deer are in the rut and they're, they're uh, just running everywhere. And we were going down Van Dyke there as we we're just passing through Emily City, and I look off to the right, and there's a, a little baby deer about the size of a German Shepherd laying dead on the side of the road. And my and I understand that it's just an animal, a hooved animal, and it lives out in the wild. But the, the heart and part of me was this: his mom is missing him. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I know they don't think like we do, and I understand about instinct and all those things, but if from a human perspective, I looked and I seen that, that little baby deer on the side of the road, and I thought his mom is missing him. And here we find that the Lord, how much more important are we than even the smallest of sparrows is what the Lord said, that he cares for us. And so that word lost it simply means perish. In John 3, 16, it tells us that picture. And it means to be lost or ruined or destroyed when we see those words in the original Greek. And it's used to refer to being sent away into a place of everlasting torment. So in other words, this little sheep is in great danger. Have you ever seen somebody who was headed for danger? Headed for trouble? Yeah. All right? And, and you you see it, but there's... And, and you you sound the alarm. You We have to have that little bell out in the front there, in front of the church, and uh, our little liberty bell. And, and I can go out there and ring that bell. If I went out there right now, I could ring that bell. And you could hear it in here. Sounding the alarm. Mm -hmm. And we have seen, all of us in this room have seen folks around us that were headed trouble and you were doing your dead level best to sound the alarm and yet they had deaf ears to it and they continued out that path and so we need to be cautious because that word lost it simply means that they're headed for ruin headed for ruin headed for destruction and you know the shepherd knows this why, why would the shepherd know that the sheep is headed for ruin and destruction Somebody help me out. Has there been other sheep headed for ruin and destruction? Yes. Has there been sheep? Maybe. And I once again, I understand it's, it's a heavenly story that, that the Lord was telling, but how many shepherds out there have lost sheep to the wolves because they got away from the, from the, from the sheepfold? I mean, legit stories, real stories of, of sheep and, and cattle that got away from the group and they wandered off by themselves. And here we find that there are folks out there that wander away and they're headed for destruction. And the shepherd, by experience, knows that that sheep, if I don't find him, is headed for ruin and headed for destruction. And so he's got an urgency about going out and looking for that lost sheep. Now, by the way, 
this uh, sheep is lost because it wandered away. All right, we have to understand that it wandered away. Um, you help me define why a sheep would wander away from the sheepfold. Somebody help me out. They get distracted. They get distracted with shiny penny. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yes. What? Why would a sheep leave the comfort of the sheepfold, leave the protection of the shepherd? They got distracted. But what are some distractions that are out there in the legit world where we find that folks wander away from the protection and the sheepfold of those that, that love them? Why would they wander away? They distracted. Brother Knight? Well, the world has got a lot of intoxicants. The bright lights and uh, that is old flesh. Uh, it craves that. that. But I'm so glad that the Lord found me. Uh, the Lord never was lost. He found me. But you know, the Bible tells us in, in Romans, there's none that seeketh after God. No, not one. There's none righteous. No, not one. And so that's why he went after that, that one sheep. Amen. And it doesn't look like the sheep was going to come back on his own. No. All right. The enticements of the world, and we have seen that time and time again. Uh, Miss Judy and Miss Jeanette's cousin got involved with some pretty scary stuff, and here she was born in, in, in Kentucky and wound up on a slab in the city of Detroit. Um, and she had been there for a long time. How sad of a picture is that? that and this is what happens when we wander away from, from protection uh, and God is always watching and looking after us, but the world wants us, and, but they don't want us to be their friend. They seek to destroy us, and that's what the world is about. A friend God knows the lost condition of humanity. We've got several passages of scriptures uh, to back that up. Isaiah 53, 6, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25, John chapter 3, and that verse 18 through 36. He knows the lost condition of our hearts as well. And he knows that folks are lost because of Adam's sin. By one man's sin, sin and death passed upon us all. So we were all born into sin. Brother Knight talked about that enticement of the world. We are all enticed by the things of the world. And do you know that even sleep can be an enticement? Mm -hmm. How many of y'all love to have a really good nap? Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I went home today, and Kelsey and Judy went to shopping. And so I, Kelsey bought us this really nice cover thing for our bed. It's, I don't know why people put like 10 pillows on their bed, but that's what we got. And so I was just going to, yeah, I was going to take a nap. And so I threw all the decorative pillows off and I peeled the, the blanket down and I got the pillow exposed where, and Chloe was kind of scratching her head. This is the one that was supposed to be in Southgate. Chloe's scratching her head. I says, well, here, come on, let's go to bed with daddy. And so she walks up and she gets on the edge of the bed and I put her on the bed and she climbs up on her spot. And then I lay down. I'm going to take me an afternoon nap. It's no longer punishment to take a nap. And I lay down, and a short time later, the little bondman, she comes up and gets up there, and she, I don't know why they do this, but they do this, and then they do this, and then they, and then they plop down, and she plopped down, and before I knew it, the door is opening, and Kelsey's yelling at me, why did you come and help get the groceries? Oh, my God. <laughs> but you know that the enticements of the flesh can turn into sin. And even the simplest of things, like sleep, people falling in love with this thing of sleep. And, and the Lord knows us. And He knows that hell is the end of the round, uh, uh, roundabout for us if we wander off and we are not turning back. We need to have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. And not only does He know our conditions, he is moved to do something about our condition. And so when he sees us wander away, do you know it, it hurts the Lord? It breaks his heart that we wander away from him? Are you aware of that? Yes. Uh, it hurts the Lord that we wander away from him. So 
what he does, he goes out looking for us. How does God metaphorically get the attention of his kids that wander away from the sheepfold? Somebody help me out. How, how would God get, a, get, get our attention if we wander away from the sheepfold? He chases us. Yeah, he, he don't chase us, he chases us, all right? He loves us. Yeah. And uh, when he chases us, he open our eyes so that we see. Amen, amen. And so the shepherd is out there for the lost sheep, and he's also for a loved sheep. Now this sheep may have wandered away from the shepherd, but it was still precious to him. There was a value in that sheep. And the shepherd wanted him returned to the flock. I look at our mailing list that I have, and it's got several names of people. And if y'all want the mailing list, I'll, I'll, I'll email it to you. Of people that are still on the mailing list that I'm not going to take off because I want to let them know, hey, we still think about you. Now, if someone leaves a church, Liberty Church, and they go off to another ministry and they're serving somewhere else, you know what? I'm going to pray for them and encourage them. But if someone just wanders off and they have put off uh, serving the Lord, then I want to continue to go after them and encourage them that the Lord loves them and wants them to return to the flock. And so here we have that loved sheep. The good shepherd loves the lost sheep. And friend, if there are folks in your life that are lost, or if you're wandering around, you need to know that God loves you. How do I know? First, he said it in Jeremiah chapter 31, in John chapter 3, verse 16. The second, he showed it in Romans chapter 5. If you ever doubt the love of God for you, then all you have to look is no further than the cross. He loves us. And so we have the loved sheep. And then we have that lone sheep. He's all by himself now. Anybody ever been lost when you was a kid? Anybody? No. All right. All right. I, I share with you my story when I got lost at Miracle Mile over in Pontiac. Um, it was a scary thought to be lost. But there is that lone sheep, just one sheep missing. Yet the shepherd still went after him. The shepherd was not detoured. The shepherd was not distracted. The shepherd, shepherd was not going to allow this one sheep from... from Keep, uh, keeping him from the task. Now, mother, another shepherd might have counted a personal cost and decided, you know what? I got 99 sheep and, 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 and they're going to be valuable to me at another time and I'm just going to let that one sheep be gone and be lost forever. But this shepherd saw the value in that one sheep. And it's kind of like that song that Pastor Jared uh, and Miss Hannah and, and the praise group sing up here about that, that loss. What was the name of that song? And, and it, it, what's that? Reckless Love. Reckless love. Yeah. He, he leaves the 90 and 9 and goes out for the 1. And a lot of people say, you know what? That doesn't make mathematical sense. Unless you're the 1. Amen? Amen. Yeah. If you're the 1, I tell you what, that's that's important because if you're the one, that's your world. It was a lone sheep, Reverend Knight. Well, he's 99, he didn't need no repentance. But that one that went, went astray, he needed repentance. Amen. Amen. And it's because the Lord loves us that we need that repentance. Hi, Emily. Did you bring me some candy? No. She's not. She's a little sour. <laughs> All right. I want you to know something else, that Jesus is our good shepherd. Jesus came into this world to die for the saved sheep. No? no. He came into the world to die for the lost. That's right. And I'm convinced that Jesus came into the world to die because he deemed every lost person Precious in his sight. You know, it's easy for us to write somebody off, isn't it? But I tell you what, the Lord is not going to write people off so easily. He has this beautiful story, this heavenly picture of the 90 and 9 and the 1. Then we have that shepherd's commitment. 
it was uh, it was dangerous for the shepherd. Somebody help me out about the shepherd being out there all by himself, got the 99, and he's getting ready to head out. It was a sacrifice for him. Somebody help me out why it's a sacrifice for that shepherd to go out looking for the one. The wolves could kill him also, as well as the sheep. Yeah. Yeah. Because truly, you got 99 sheep and you got the one shepherd and the shepherd, he's got that big crook in and, 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 and his staff and he's probably got a fire going and you know, uh, that fire probably keeps the predators away and he's standing there near the big fire and the 99 sheep, they're all gathered really tight together and here he says, you know, I've counted and I've counted and I've counted again and we're still missing one. I have to go. And it was a sacrifice for him. It was dangerous and possibly deadly for the shepherd. And we knew that the Lord, when he came to planet Earth, it was an absolute death. Yes. It was certain. And we need to remember the price that he paid to save the sheep. He paid with his life. And so it was a special sacrificial commitment that the shepherd made when he went out after the one. It was also a successful commitment. You see, the shepherd didn't stop until his mission had been completed and the sheep had been found. Isn't it a wonderful thing to rejoice when you find something? <coughs> I once was lost in that Amazing Grace song. It's a rejoicing time, and I'm sure the shepherd, as he finds the one, just like Jesus said, and he cried, it is finished in John chapter 19. <coughs> the shepherd's labor had not been wasted. When Jesus cried with a loud voice, it is finished. His labor had not been wasted. And here we find that shepherd, he threw that sheep upon his shoulders. Come on, you tubalard. <laughs> Let's go back home. I'm about out of time, but I want to share with you just a brief story. I had a, a, a dachshund. He was a large dachshund. His name was Moots. And we got Moots when I was a small boy. And my mom had went over to the, to the uh, dog pound over here on Brown Road. And she was going over there to get dog license or something. And while she was over there, because we had another dog already and. While she was over there, there was a fellow. He was dropping off this one-year-old dachshund, large red dachshund, hot dog dog. And he was dropping it off. He was turning it in because he had a bird dog, and him and the bird dog would fight. And they had gotten this big fight and bit off a piece of the, the dachshund's ear. And he says, I can't have my bird dog fighting with this dog here. And so my mom was there, and he had papers and everything. And... My mom says, well, how much do you want for him? He says, I'm just turning him in. And so he gave her that dog, and he is my dog. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like old Yiller. He's my dog. Well, it was the first winter time as boys and girls are out of that big, huge snow. Wasn't the snow bigger when we were kids, or we were just shorter? I don't know. <laughs> but we were in a big snow, and the moots were so short, he could only walk in the tire tracks of the big snow. <laughs> And I, he got out of the yard, and I began to chase him. And he's running down Cornell Street, West Cornell Street, going towards Carlisle. And he's running, and I'm running after him. And he thinks we're playing. I'm not playing. And I began to run, and he goes across Carlisle. And he goes start running up West Cornell Street towards Baldwin. And he gets over there about five or six houses off of Carlisle. And I'm, I capture him. And I land on top of him, and I'm holding him in the snow, and he's trying to fight to get away. He thinks we're playing. And then the fellow comes to the door of the house where I'm at, and I'm, by this time I'm crying. And uh, the fellow says, are you all right? And I can look, and I heard my dad whistle. How many of y'all had, had somebody who called for you, and it just was a comforting thing? And I heard him whistle, and I could see the porch light on. And I could hear him yell for my name. And I knew salvation was coming. 
You see, I was overjoyed, not only that I've captured my dog, my dad was probably overjoyed that he found his boy. I had wandered away in a snowstorm. And there was a commitment that I had that I didn't want to let that dog run away. He was my dog. And we spent a whole lot of years together and I'm so glad that I chased him. What a beautiful picture that we see of the shepherd when he went out for that lost one and the rejoicing that took place when he had that successful commitment. Someone with a comment question. We had the shepherd's conquest in verses 6 through 7 and we're about done. We're about out of time. But it involves a rescue. The sheep has been found and the sheep has been rescued from danger in which it had been in. Now the word saved means, in verses 6 to 7, means to rescue from all harm and danger. That's what we read in there. And this is what the shepherd had done. Rescued from all harm and danger. And that's what the great shepherd has done for his sheep. He delivers us from danger and damage of our sin. All of God's sheep are delivered from the penalty of sin and the power of sin and the presence of sin. That's what the great shepherd has done for you and I. We are no longer under the penalty of sin. The punishment has been stamped and the punishment is no longer valid. We are no longer under the power of sin. It doesn't mean we're not under the enticement of sin. Miss uh, Louise kind of led to that in just a little com couple comments ago. There is going to be the enticements of sin, but sin does not have power over us anymore. And then lastly, we no longer have the presence of sin in our life. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Brother Mike. I was thinking, I'm getting ahead of you probably. And there's rejoicing. In heaven, over one sinner come to repentance. Amen. It doesn't say the angels rejoicing, but I believe the Lord is telling those people that has prayed for that that sheep that He just got got found. Amen. Amen. I'm a firm believer in that as well. Amen. Somebody else with a comment, Miss Kelly. You know, whenever we lost Julie, and when I found her. I was a mess. I mean, my heart, it took me probably a good part of the afternoon, a couple of hours for my blood pressure and everything to go back. But when I found her, I asked her, I said, were, were you afraid? And I was expecting her to say, you know, she was afraid. She didn't realize she was in danger. Yeah. She found, when we were all lost, you know, she thought we were lost. So she went and found some kids to play with and just blended in with all these other children. And she didn't even realize that she could have been in danger. Yeah. And there were 11,000 people there that day. And a lot of times when people wander out in the world, they don't even realize that they're in danger. And when I found her, of course, I was rejoicing. And um, I think Tom said, you need to spank her. I said, I'm not spanking her. I just held on to her and held on to her and held on to her because I, I, you know, didn't, I was just, this is my child and I had lost her for that period of time. I mean, 35, 40 minutes, I mean, the short time in the course of a day, but when you lose a four-year-old at a public place like that, it's terrifying. And um, I just, I couldn't punish her. Amen. Well, and it's, and maybe that's where we'll, we'll close for now, but it's a good thought to understand that many times the sheep don't know they're in danger. They don't know how dangerous it is. And how, I'm already asking a rhetorical question. All of us know what it's like to wander away from the sheepfold. All of us in this room. From one degree to another, whether it's 25 steps or 25 miles, we know what it's like to wander away from the sheepfold. When we wander away, we really don't know what kind of dangers is out there. But the shepherd does. He knows because he had to deal with that before. Uh, and that the sheep that didn't make it, the sheep that got gobbled up by the wolves. 
the sheep that fell down on the ravine and starved to death because they were unable to get out by themselves. All right, let's conclude right there. We'll pick this up next week, verses 6 and 7, all right? Father, we love you and we thank you for your word tonight. I pray that you bless us as we go our separate ways. Bless all of us as we start this new week. I pray that your hand of protection would be upon us all as we travel and go about our daily tasks, go to the job, go to different places of, of uh, play that you have set for us to be this week. I pray, dear God, that you would bless. Continue to uh, have your hand upon us. And Lord, I pray for Sister Joni in the hospital. Encourage her. Uh, heal her, Lord, as only you can. We thank you for bringing her this far. And I'm going to just say a quick prayer for Sister Mary Marshall. Lord, I pray and thank you for her commitment to the Sunday Night Kids. Uh, Lord, I know that she just battles through a lot of uh, personal pain. I pray that you'd encourage her and touch her body, that she wouldn't be in so much pain, uh, that she's able to uh, get around a little bit better this week. And Lord, we'll give you the honor and the praise for that. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, and God's people said, Amen. 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 Thanks, guys. God bless. Thank you. This is for Charmel, too. So we pray for you too.